everybody! Welcome to Let's Look at Gravity Ghost. This is a game that came out uh, just as I was coming back from being away, but I had some familiarity with it and was excited for the final release because I actually played this way back in August of 2013 when I was doing this mini-series thing called PAX at Home, where basically I played games that were going to be at PAX Prime 2013, but I played them from the comfort of my own home and they gave my thoughts to them, kind of like the same way you do videos from the show floor, except without the pressure of being on the show floor, having tons of people speaking at all times, gawking at you, and, you know, you know having to come up with stuff off the top of your dome. Obviously no good at that, so I did that from the comfort of my own domicile. But in any case, the game is actually out now. It's 15 US dollars available on Steam. What the heck is Gravity Ghost? I will explain. I actually beat Gravity Ghost in a single sitting. Now, a lot of people are going to take that as, uh, you know, Gravity Ghost being super easy or something like that. It is. And a lot of people are going to take that as Gravity Ghost being super short. Or something like that, and you know, honestly, it's, it's not super short, you know, it's not like an hour long. Um, but it was about two, two and a half, maybe three hours. Um, so it's not a super long game, but this is a game that is still great in spite of the fact that, that it's neither of those things. And I mean, that's not a rare thing. It's not like the most controversial opinion to say that, you know, not all times a game being long is a good thing, and not all times a game being difficult is a good thing. But anyway, this is much more of a game that is a little bit more of an experience than it is a mechanics-focused, you know, platformer. I think we may actually need to start a new game for me to actually uh, experience the mechanics, though. So I just wanted to, I don't know, prove, I guess, do my due diligence and say, like, hey, check it out, motherfuckers, I've beaten the game. But anyway, uh, we'll go back to our main menu here and we'll start a, a new game so that we can kind of do things together. What the heck is Gravity Ghost? Gravity Ghost is a, um... It is a ambient physics-based puzzle platformer. It really feels like... Uh, a game that could have come out, and I mean this in a good way, but a game that could have come out back in 2012, 2011, you know, when every single indie game that was coming out, it seemed, was just a puzzle platformer with, like, variations on a theme. This is kind of like that, and to be honest with you, I kind of considered that a little bit of a breath of fresh air, um, you know, instead of playing, like, my eighth MOBA of the year or something like that. Or, you know, a couple of years ago, my eighth tower defense. But it is a little bit more than that as well. It's a game that's much more focused on the experience than it is in the mechanics. The, the mechanic is interesting. The gimmick, if you will, is interesting and uh, works well and is satisfying. It's a game that I would really describe as... It's not just like a... It, it doesn't have just like ambient music. It's almost like an ambient game. It's very pleasant to play uh, and, and very satisfying in its own right. Not in the same way as like a Super Meat Boy. More in a... I don't know. It's more in like a... a Feel-good movie kind of way. Anyway, I was kind of... Uh, you know, doing my own little dipsy doodle around the point there. I was trying to explain the mechanics of the game. So it is a game that is, it's got this like Super Mario Galaxy type thing uh, where there is, there's gravity and orbit essentially. So, you know, Gravity Ghost probably gives you a little bit of a hint of that in the title itself. And you also play as a, uh, the spirit of a deceased young girl. And there's a little bit of a story that, well, a lot of a story that wraps around. And you get more information as things go on and you eventually get this, you know, kind of emotional and cathartic conclusion. It's, it's got some tear-jerking moments. I'm not going to lie. I came a little bit close to tearing up myself because I'm a big baby. You know, fuck that. I came close to tearing up because it's an emotional story. I'm not going to be try to be a big man about it and say, oh, uh, you know, I don't cry. You know, I've cried before in my life. Gravity Ghost didn't quite get me to the level that To the Moon did, but but it did make me tear up a little bit, all right? You should own that shit. Don't be afraid of that shit. Anyway, if you cry when the Philadelphia Eagles make the Super Bowl, you can cry during a video game. It's an emotional experience as well. There are different types of abilities that you get, and there are different types of blocks or planets that you end up coming across as well, but the core gameplay remains the same. Effectively, get the star, the star opens the door, then get through the door, and you can exit the level. It, there are are some rudimentary puzzles. There's another mechanic here. Basically, uh, if you pick up these little uh, flowers, they make your hair grow longer. You use that hair a little later in the game to terraform planets. Terraforming planets is rarely 100% necessary, but it can be useful to make getting stars easier. But there was really only one puzzle in the game that I found uh, at all difficult that gave me like any kind of trouble whatsoever, and uh, I can't think of any levels that took me like more than a couple of tries to knock out. Um, it, again, it's not Super Meat Boy, it, it's, it's not even Braid, it's not meant to be difficult, it's meant to be more of kind of like a, an ambient experience. So this is, uh, the world map, you saw it earlier, we're gonna check out Spirits and Skeletons here, and because the game moves pretty quickly, we should keep, be able to get through at least a, a couple of levels here, uh, in order to give you a pretty good idea, a couple of worlds, I should say, in order to give you a pretty good idea of what Gravity Ghost is all about, and hopefully that includes some of the narrative as well. I would be remiss if I didn't mention as early as possible, come on, come on, dog. We gotta catch this thing Super Mario 64 style. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that the uh, soundtrack is by Ben Prunty, who is uh, the 
composer of the music in FTL as well as Starcrawlers. And not only is the music impressive, but, you know, I, I've been following uh, Ben's work. Not that we're on a first name basis or anything like that, but I've been following it for a while since I first played FTL back in September. And this kind of, it, it represents kind of a new frontier, I guess, for his stuff. It, it's a little bit more ambient, a little bit more whimsical as opposed to being, you know, the sci-fi kind of, I don't know what you call it, EDM. Or, uh, I guess, IDM that, that punctuated FTL and, and punctuated Starcrawlers to some extent. The soundtrack is really good. Sets the tone nicely. There's a little bit of voice acting as well. You'll hear it right here. In a minute. Awkward silence. Welcome to the afterlife. Here is your hug. So, yeah. I mean, the basic plot of the game is that uh, our main character here is looking for her pet fox. Oh, we'll, we'll get all this stuff to make our hair grow longer, even though we won't, might not necessarily need the you know, maximally long hair here. Um, we're, uh, we're looking for our pet fox. There was some kind of tragedy that happened that's alluded to, you know, throughout the worlds, uh, the levels that you go through in the game. Uh, and eventually you can piece the story together. You're on the quest to figure out what happened to you and your, your animal companions. It's just, it's an easy shortcut for, you know, emotional resonance as animals, man. It's the secret Disney's been using for years, but it does work. I don't really need to get all those flowers. It's not a game that I think is e even focused on like 100% completion or anything like that. The reason I, I harp on this stuff is because, all, not because it's necessarily super important for a platformer, but because almost every other platformer. Uh, well, I'll so let this great. go first, and then I'll talk about it. Let me have a tree house. They never let me hunt these woods neither, but here we are. Tell are you a poacher? Me? Nah. I just like to sleep under the stars with a rifle and shoot things to sell. Hey, want some ham? <laughs> what, what did I tell you? You can't bring food up here. Why not? You never know what a wild animal is capable of. And mark my words, food will bring them nothing, even all the way up here. Okay. There's a good lass. Safety for... <laughs> oh, blast it! My good thumb! So the game is told in sort of... Or the story is told in, in uh, vignettes like that. Let's make our way down here to uh, Heavy Heart, which will demonstrate a different kind of gameplay style. But yeah, the reason I keep mentioning, like, oh, you know, it doesn't have 100% completion, or oh, it's not a tough-as-nails Super Meat Boy-style platformer, is because so many games... Uh, it, it seems like basically puzzle platformers take w one of three different ways. They're either trying to be Portal, or they're trying to be Super Meat Boy, and this is a little bit overly reductive, and I kind of apologize for writing an entire genre off like this. Or they try to be a collect-a-thon, like, you know, Super Mario 64 or Rayman or something like that. And a lot of those games succeeded that, even if they might be deri derivative. This one's a little different in that it's uh, more of a, a game that's about the experience. It's almost like an art platformer, which I know the A word gets people all bent out of shape and stuff like that, but it's a game where, you know, the mechanics are nice, but it's not about that, if that makes sense. It's hard to say it without having it come across as like a backhanded compliment, but uh, I, I don't mean it as a backhanded compliment, I mean it as, uh, you know, an extremely positive thing. Again, I beat this game in one sitting. Typically for, you know, uh, let's look at games, I, I tend to play an hour or so. And then I go, well, yeah, I've got the gist of that. I can do a video on it. For this, I was like, I've got the gist of it, but I'm going to beat it anyway because, well, first off, it seemed pretty short. And also, uh, I, was, I was having a very pleasant time. This game got me through my jet lag on my, my uh, recovery day yesterday, I guess you could say, after that long flight. Again, it's not difficult. So what you're largely watching me do here is, is stuff that you can repeat yourself extremely easily. So we're just going to bounce around here. It's a game that, the, the way that I could see this becoming kind of co-opted by the community that's more associated with hardcore games is, is if it became like for speedruns and stuff like that because beating the levels isn't hard but beating them quickly might be uh heavy heart will demonstrate one of the other kinds of levels that you get here which is a maze now this is a simple one they do get a little bit more difficult uh as time goes on but there's a little bit almost of a it's not really metroidvania-esque it's not like different paths open up to you as you unlock different abilities but every one of these orbs that you pick up will give you a new ability which will make it easier for you to navigate you know the quote-unquote zero-g environments here and actually obtain all the orbs when i played gravity ghost uh, back in Aug oh i gotta actually get it when i played gravity ghost back in uh, august of 2013 i enjoyed like the central conceit but i was kind of like I, I i don't really understand the point yet 
Like, I don't understand. I, I understand what we're doing, but I don't understand why we're doing it or, like, what kind of envelope the game's going to be wrapped in. And th they really sorted that out. I mean, obviously, that was a year and a half ago, so there's been a lot of work done on the game since then. It's not like it was my feedback or anything like that. Uh, it was probably just planned to happen anyway. But, yeah, now, now that there's this this kind of like narrative wrapping around it and uh, the the different abilities that you can get as time goes on, which I'll explain in a minute. Did we, did we do this one? Maybe not. It just looks similar. Um, uh, it's it, it definitely is a better game for it. So I'm trying to think of like what games to recommend as analogs to this. Like if you liked Blah, you'd be into Blah, but there, there aren't really that many to be honest with you. Um, it almost reminds me, at least like atmospherically, a little bit of like Loom or Lumino City, not Loom the LucasArts like point and click adventure. I'm doing so badly here. Let's see if we can. Ooh, no, okay, botched it. We could also just try to swing through and break all these. By the way, our ability makes it so we become heavier, which makes it so we're more attracted to the gravitational bodies we're surrounding here. Um, it, it's got like a certain level of dark whimsy to it. I don't know, it's got like a Lemony Snicket vibe or something like that going on. Unless you hate Lemony Snicket, in which case I didn't mean that. I've only seen the movie. I'm sorry. Um, but I have to support Jim Carrey, the prodigal son of Canada. Can we, yeah, we can get escape velocity there, get up here, and then get the star and come back down. It's really a game that you can kind of like, that's why I call it almost like an ambient game. It's almost like Proteus, but with more of a, an obvious point, if that makes sense. And that's not necessarily meant to be a knock at Proteus either. Uh, there are, there are some puzzles. I'm not sure if we're actually going to see any of them. There's puzzles beyond just jumping puzzles. There's, like, some puzzle puzzles where you have to, uh, and beyond just mazes as well. Puzzles where you have to, like, manipulate the environment in such a way as to complete something. But they're very, very light. Um, and, you know, I say that as someone who is, is terrible at doing puzzles in most games myself. So if I say they're light, you know that they're pretty light. That being said, there's still something very compelling about this experience. And it, it's something that has been challenging for me as kind of a pseudo-reviewer to figure out what the heck to describe it as, because I found myself compelled to beat the entire game, but I don't really know why. I, I wasn't necessarily quote-unquote having fun. Uh, I'm going to talk over this voice acting because it's quiet for me anyway. Um, but, uh, it, it, you know, it wasn't like I was playing it and I was like addicted to the game or anything like that. I just wanted to see where it went. So I think it's just a testament to the fact that it's it's well-written and paced. And uh, it, it's also, it's just pleasant to kind of bask in this like gravity ghost world that's that's colorful and also the, the movement is you know, satisfying in and of itself. So this is teaching us about uh, terraforming and also the, the, the rest of the game, basically, like the, the, the setup for the story, but you don't really need to know in order to understand. Basically, the galaxy is cool, and then a black hole happens and rips everything apart. We gotta stop the black hole, or, you know, reverse the black hole, basically. It's a bit of an abstract story. There's a, there's a few different layers to it that are going on. There's a layer that takes place in the abstract. There's a layer that takes place in reality. It, I hesitate to say this, but, it, you know, a uh, comparison for that that might make sense is something like, I don't know, Darren Aronofsky's The Fountain or something like that. You've got these, like, parallel storylines taking place. Maybe I'm treating it a little bit more esoteric than it should be. Maybe it's a little bit more straight up than that. But that was my interpretation of it anyway. So we also collect these orbs. There's, like, seven of these guardians in the game. Each one of these guardians gives us an orb. We use those orbs uh, for some express purpose that I think I have forgotten. Now it has a, um, uh, again, like a normal platformer style of gating, where basically the more stars you get, uh, the further into the game that you can get. You need 60 stars to beat the game, or to get to the level where you unlock the last element that allows you to beat the game. That won't take you too long. You could probably do that in about an hour and a half, two hours, and then you know the final level shouldn't take you that much longer. So I, I think probably it, it might have taken me a little bit longer, but I would probably classify this as about a two hour game. And that's, a, you know, I, I mentioned it not because it's a problem for me, but I know it's a problem for some people, and I don't think it's necessarily fair to write it off. It's a two-hour game for 15 bucks if you are the kind of person who d describes things as, like, a price by, or, like, a, a value scale, which is just, you know, the price I paid for it divided by the amount of time I get for it. Uh, this is probably not going to be up your alley, but you probably knew that already. Uh, if you're the kind of person, and uh, I know there's a lot of you out there, probably the majority, um... Who, who actually like appreciates short games as well, you might want to consider giving this one your time. I would consider it, you know, 15 hours, same price as a movie. I mean, this is more memorable than many movies that I've seen in, in recent memory for sure. I kind of, I feel so shitty about using that comparison. It's such like a, a bullshit reductive comparison. Like, well, it's the same cost of, as a movie, you know? You, you, I don't necessarily feel like I should be the one de like having to defend the price point of Gravity Ghost. It's a good game. This is what it costs if you want to play it you know, in advance of a sale, that's what you're going to have to pay for, basically. 
I don't know if it's worth paying 15 bucks for, but it's worth playing is what I'm trying to get at here. The price thing just adds a whole different element here. And, you know, some days I, I wish, and I, well, I, be careful what you wish for, right? But some days I, I'm jealous of people who do, like, movie reviews and stuff like that. Because if you're doing movie reviews, you never have to be like, well, the movie was good, but was it $60 good? I don't know, you know? This should, I didn't think this was a $10 movie. This should be a $5 movie. But, you know, that that's, that's games criticism, and that's, uh... You know, it, it is a relevant thing for, for everybody, just to differing degrees, you know? I didn't buy Steel Battalion. I don't care how much a game is as long as it's good. Well, I didn't buy Steel Battalion. I hear that game is pretty solid. Anyway, I, I, this is becoming a whole different diatribe altogether. But it's becoming a whole different diatribe because this is a game that's a bit nebulous to talk about. It's, it, it's a hard game to talk about because it doesn't fall into standard, like, it's like blah but better, or it's like blah but worse kind of commentary. Uh, in, instead, it, it's its own unique thing, and I think that's probably the strongest reason that I can come up with to recommend it. Beyond the fact that it's a pleasant and satisfying experience to be a part of, you know, it's a game that I just like inhabiting. Um, on top of that, it is actually like, uh, it, it, it's unique. Most games that kind of tell a story, they either tell that story within traditional gaming style. I'm thinking of something like a like a Child of Light. That was a story-focused game, uh, but it was also a fairly straight-up turn-based RPG, right? Or they take the style completely in the other direction of something like Gone Home or The Novelist, and they become, you know, the the Chinese room-style games like, uh, you know, the TB describes as walking simulators or whatever. Anyway. Uh, th this kind of, it, it finds a, a middle ground that I consider relatively unique that is pretty cool. Now, invariably there have been other games that have kind of struck this balance before, but this is the closest one that I can come up to in, in uh, recent memory at the very least. And that, I guess, is one of the reasons that made it such a novel and pleasant experience. Plus, TB and I, for the most part, have very different, well, not very different, but we have different things that we look for in games. And as I understand it, he also liked Gravity Ghost quite a lot, which I have to admit in some ways was validating. I was like, I'm glad he likes it, because this is a game that, if, if you asked me, I would say that him being the kind of person that's more mechanics-focused for the most part, I don't think he'd necessarily be... Um, taking issue with me saying that, uh, I would be like, yeah, I wouldn't expect him to be as into the premise of something like this. So to hear that he likes it, it is, is in a way validating that this is an experience that's a little bit more universal. Is that... Uh, we gotta bring a different animal spirit back here in order to inhabit that, uh, skeleton there. So, uh, that's, that's Gravity Ghost. I'm gonna play, like, a couple more levels here. I'll do this maze to get our next ability, and then I'll get our first magical element so you can learn a little bit about the, uh, terraforming thing. But, um, there, there's really... Oh, uh, I should probably restart this level because I've bunged up the very simple maze, but I think we can get the ball out. Um, the, the terraforming element is fairly superficial except for a few things. Basically, like, you've seen some of the planets. Some of the planets are like ice. If you walk over the ice planets with your water element active, they'll turn to water. When they're water, um, if there's something inside of them that you needed to get, like flowers to make your hair longer or... Um, you know, the star to actually complete the level, or the door to complete the level, then it being in water will free it. So there's the slightest little bit of necessity to doing it. Or, you know, there will be times when, um... You, uh, you're having a tough time and you're just like, well, if this was not... You know, if this was water, it would be easier for me to do it. Or if this was, f like, a bouncy ball, it would be easier for me to do it. So that's, that's the way that that works out. So I'm not sure what this one does. I think this one gives us glide. Yeah, the last one gave us heavy, this one gives us glide. So glide allows us to, to kind of orbit without necessarily falling into a, uh, a gravitational body's surface. Somewhat. And heavy makes it so that we approach the surface more, uh, or less tangentially, I guess, more perpendicularly. Uh, so we gotta get our star here, that we can use glide to make that happen. The mazes are fine, you know, there's like six of them, seven of them throughout the game. Uh, none of them are particularly challenging, but they added a little bit of variety. Hopefully after this level we'll see a little bit more of the uh, terraforming aspect and then we can finish it up because I don't really have that much more to say gra about Gravity Ghost. It's a game that, uh, I, I mean, let's put it this way, there's a couple of checkboxes in standard, you know, games criticism stuff that I haven't ticked off. How are the visuals? Beautiful, storybook-like, uh, Child of Light is another pretty good comparison there, I think. Uh, it, it's a good looking game, very colorful. Uh, and it, it tickles my fancy, let's put it that way. I already mentioned the soundtrack, I think the soundtrack is excellent. This is an example, by the way, that star is trapped in the planet. If we terraform it, which uses our hair, by the way, that's what the connection to the flowers there is, then we can get the star and pop out the other side. Occasionally it becomes useful, albeit somewhat rarely. Um, sound effects, good. 
game feel good. Controls are fine. It's never that frustrating when the controls maybe feel like they're messing you up because you can just get another pass at it, right? Like, there's very few situations. I, I only encountered it once, and I think I was maybe not even in a complete failure state where, like, I couldn't complete a puzzle, but... Uh, I, I did have to restart one maze once, because I was like, I don't think I can get it out of that hole. But for the most part, if you fudge something up, you can just come back in and, uh, you know, fix it for yourself. Uh, good assortment of abilities that actually make it a lot easier to traverse the environment. Not that it necessarily needs it, because it's already, you know, relatively easy. But um, the, the glide and uh, the heavy and stuff are pretty useful, but there's ones that you get later that are even more useful. Like, uh, you know, an air dash or the ability to, to jump multiple times in the air to kind of adjust your... Uh, your trajectory, which takes a little bit of the the gravity part of the game out of it, but does also make it less frustrating to get from point A to point B in certain situations. There are occasionally times when it can be somewhat difficult to get an objective, but uh, to get a star, but very, very rarely. Uh, for the most part, this is a game that you're playing, uh, you know, just to experience the game as opposed to, like, conquer the game or, you know, complete the challenges or anything like that. So I think that's going to do it uh, for my... Let's look at a Gravity Ghost. It's a weird game. I recognize that this might not be the most useful companion piece <laughs> when it comes to the game to figure out whether or not you're going to like it. Uh, the, the Cliff Notes, though, it's 15 bucks. It's short. It's memorable. Touching. You know, another game that this is not super dissimilar to is Brothers, although Brothers was a little bit more gamey than Gravity Ghost is. Not that, you know, it's a competition or anything like that. But anyway, I liked it a lot. I beat it in one sitting. It's not for everybody. You know, if you... I've mentioned a lot of games over the course of this show, or over the course of this video, if you're not fans of those at all, and I know a lot of people are not fans of Brothers, and they're not fans of, you know, Proteus, and not that I'm necessarily a huge fan of Proteus. Not that I'm not. That, okay, I'm going to stop saying that phrase for a couple of days. Um... You should know. You should know that this is probably not going to be your kind of game, but if you're the kind of person who is into that sort of stuff, I would definitely encourage picking it up. This is a game that, uh, again, I, I very rarely beat games in a single sitting. I, I Very, very rarely do I beat much of the stuff on Let's Look At It All, just because, for the most part, it's a huge time investment. But uh, I, I really enjoyed the time that I spent with Gravity Ghost. It didn't overstay its welcome, uh, and it, it doesn't need the filler content. You know, it, it stands well on its own in spite of that. Great soundtrack, too. In any case, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And, of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. As always, thanks for watching. And uh, did I already mention there's going to be a Steam link to pick up Gravity Ghost if you're interested? That'll be in the video description below. I, I, there's an awkward silence that I feel can only be filled by saying I love you. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.